16, have you got it? He talks about collections. Verse number one, concerning the collection of the saints. Um, he says, I've given order to the church and upon the first day every week, let everyone lay aside him in store as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. This um, message is not about money, don't worry. Because sometimes it's always going to be a money message. Might be money message, I don't know. Anyway, verse 5, <laughs> I will come unto you when I shall pass through Macedonia, for I do pass through Macedonia, and it may be that I will abide, yea, the winter with you, that ye may bring me on my journey wheresoever I go. Verse number 7, and I will not see you now by the way, but I trust to tarry a while with you if the Lord permits. But I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost, for a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. Let me read that again, verse number 8. But I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost, for a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. Adversaries. I want to talk to you, if I can, tonight. Uh, if I can, I want you to hear me by the Holy Ghost. I want to talk to you between your Passover and your Pentecost. I want to talk between Passover and Pentecost. Father, I need you now. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. Give us revelation. Give us understanding that your word will bring clarity and truth to your people. We thank you now in the name of Yeshua the Christ, Son of the living God. Someone say amen. Do me a favor. This is the way I operate. Just look at your neighbor. Say between Passover and Pentecost. You may be seated. That's what happened. You're between your Passover and Pentecost. I, I like Dr. Ibaji. I've always um, loved him, but particularly because we have a lot in common. I'm into what we call biblical pneumologies. And when we talk about biblical pneumology, we're talking about the study of numbers and the meanings. Uh, to this year, we're in 2014. And uh, with these numbers, there are some significant things we need to know about as we are dealing with the year 2014. 14, which is the notable number, speaks of the number that deals with generations. Uh, the book of Matthew 1, 9, um, 17 tells us that all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And then it tells us from David unto the captivity of Babylon, 14 generations. And from the captivity of Babylon to Christ is another 14 generations. So wherever we hear the number 14, we think of the number of generations. Also, when you hear the word 14 or generations, you have to think of, when we're dealing with generations, legacy. Everybody say legacy. That, that means God is not just going to just do anything this year. He is setting up a legacy. Let me try that again. That means God is not just going to have an ordinary blessing or impartation upon your life, there is going to be this year, and you need to understand, a potent, strong solution of what God is getting ready to do that it's not just thin out or watered down, it's going to be so potent that it moves to the next generation. So we're going to have to understand, this is a prophetic service today, and I've come with an apostolic anointing to let you know that God is about to put in order tonight something that is going to last you, something that's going to go beyond your years. Everybody say legacy. Now you're going to have to talk back to me again. Everybody say legacy. Legacy. Okay. And so with the number 14, we understand 14 is two sevens. Sevens is the number of perfection, completion. We all know that. So we're looking at two sevens joining together, which speaks of a double completion of something. Everybody say double. Uh, the number 14 also represents, if I may, salvation. It represents deliverance. It represents covenant. And it also represents the Passover. The Bible lets us know it was on the 14th day, 14th day, that they were commanded to what we have, celebrate the Passover. Now, 
you've got to understand this very clearly. When you hit the number 14, 14 represents the Passover, which is linked, if you would understand, to an end of an era, an end of a slavery mentality, an end of the captivity portion of your life. That means that every area of your life where the enemy had held you bound, God is getting ready this year, I'm feeling it in my soul, to loose you from things that had been holding you bound for years. Now, if you believe that, you ought to say something. Look at your neighbor and say, he's talking about me. So, 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 so here you got to understand this whole thing. Everybody say Passover. Passover. So on the 40th day, they were commanded to commit, to, to, to um, celebrate what we call the Passover. The Passover. And for those of you, uh, you all should understand in this prophetic anointing here that the Passover represents a season where God said uh, to Moses, tell the children of Israel they're about to exit out of Egypt. Exit. Exodus. 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 Ex. Hold us. X is the word for out. Remember that ex-boyfriend, ex-girlfriend? Anytime you say that's my ex, you're telling them he's out. She's out. X. Everybody say X. Hold us means way. Okay? So X hold us means way out. It means the whole of Exodus is that they're about to come out of something. So here what you've got to understand here is that we're now at this point, the children of Israel was told by God, Moses, tell the children of Israel they're about to go, but there's some plagues about to hit the land. And I'm about to destroy all the firstborn of Egypt. Now, if you don't want your firstborn to die, this is what they were commanded, to have the Passover, and they were supposed to kill a lamb. They were supposed to eat the flesh of the lamb, but take the blood of the lamb and put it on the doorpost of the house. Because death angel was going to come. The Bible lets us know in um, Psalms that there was an actual angel called death angel that was going to pass over Egypt. But any house that had the blood over the doorpost, the lintel, when the angel comes, if the blood was there, it would have to pass over. Everybody say pass over. Okay, so 14 represents the past. The Father's House presents IGAP 2015. Come and receive power like never before. Featuring Dr. Sharon Stone from Windor, UK. Jesus did not come to give us life just to take us back to what Adam had in the garden. But he said, I have come to give you life and I've come and give you life abundantly. Bishop Francis from London. But you got to understand that this year, if there's any tragedy that's been assigned to your life, if you have the blood of Jesus over your life, this is the year you don't have to worry because whatever the enemy has planned, it's got to have to. Bishop Joe Iboje from Arbidine, UK. You don't need good news to carry good news because you are the good news. Hello? Some of you say, okay, I want good news. No. When you enter any place, there will be good news in that place. Phil Sanderson from Arbidine, UK. Emma Stark from Glasgow, UK. Joe Ewing from Benef, UK. And Dr. Imano Ziga from the United States of America. Date, May 14th through the 17th, 2015. Come one, come all. Register now, www.fathers-house.org.uk or contact Pastor Cynthia on 01224-566-360. Over. What you got to understand that this year, if there's any tragedy that's been assigned to your life, if you have the blood of Jesus over your life, this is the year you don't have to worry. Because whatever the enemy has planned, it's got to have to. You got the message. Look over to your neighbor and say it's going to pass over. Pass over, pass over, pass over. So I want you to understand that this is strategic this year, that the assignment of death will not hit your life. In fact, you are going to live to declare the works of the Lord. 
Everybody say Passover. Also, I want you to understand about this year where it's important because not only it's the year of the Passover, but in the Jewish uh, 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 perspective, they understand this year, the year of promise. It's also known in the Jewish, uh, 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 from the Jewish culture, uh, they understand it as a year of what we call the leap year. And it's known not only as a leap year, okay, but a year of the pregnant person. It is those, catch this, who has been carrying something in the spirit. That this is your year, that what you're being carrying. This ain't for everybody, by the way. It's for those of you that are pregnant with something. God is going to, this year, make sure that what you've been carrying for years will be manifest. Yeah. Everybody say it's a pregnant year. Yeah. Pregnant year, pregnant year. And I, 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 they said it's a pregnant year, also it's a leap year. And if you understand anything about leap year, uh, you will understand that that means there's going to be an acceleration where things that should have taken you a long time, God is going to do it overnight. Yeah. Everybody say acceleration. 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 That, means, that means God is going to speed up the process. He's going to speed up the process. That means he's getting ready. He's putting things in order. But this is for people who are pregnant, who are believing God, and you've been waiting on God for manifestation. There is a speeding up of what God's getting ready to do. Somebody say, do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Okay, okay, okay. Now, while I was sitting down, and I was thinking, and I was getting ready to preach, I said, God, I, I remember clearly when Bishop asked me to come, it was very tight for me to be here in terms of my whole itinerary uh, for this year. Uh, but I, I, I felt an urge in my spirit to make an effort to be here. Uh, not only did I love being here last year, but I felt in my spirit it was important for me to be here. And I don't come to places just because I want to come because I have enough speaking engagements. I'm here because I believe somebody in here is about to move into another dimension and God has sent me here to release this word. And while I was sitting there, Dr. Stone, and I began to hear the announcements and I was thinking about it just before he said it, he said that the clocks are going forward. And while he began to say that, the Holy Ghost said to me, I have just said to you, I'm accelerating this year. And in other words, everything that just like in the natural, so in the spiritual, the clock is going forward. That means God has set the clock that he is shifting things quicker than what you expected. That, that, that sounds like somebody don't want what I'm talking about. Everybody say he's speeding it up. He's speeding it up. He's speeding up. Now, now, here's the problem when the clock goes forward. The clock goes forward, you're going to lose that sleep. <laughs> it means you have to wake up earlier. Uh, isn't this called the awakening? It, it means, it means you, you're going you're gonna to have to lose one old hour of what we are used to uh, and be alert a little bit early than what you normally have. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. It's because God is saying what I'm getting ready to do, I'm not doing it behind. In fact, I'm restoring the years that the palmer worm, canker worm, grasshopper, caterpillar, everything that is stolen, I'm shifting you this year. Somebody say he's talking to me. Look at somebody say he's talking to me. So this is the year from the Jewish perspective. Please excuse me. I'm, my church is called Ruach Ministries. So you can know just by the name of that. I'm very much into the Hebrew uh, um, culture. I try to understand as much as I can do in terms of understanding. Because our Bible is written from a Hebrew perspective. And we need to understand the laws of first mentions, the laws of beginnings, so that we can understand that which is new. Yes, we're into the New Testament, but everything has a shadow. 
A shadow brings us to the truth. Huh? It's the shadow conceal and it's Jesus being revealed in the New Testament. You understand what I'm saying? So, so, so here, here what you got to understand this year, 2014, how unique it is. God is getting ready to accelerate and that means all of your promises, all the things that God promised you, everything that he said, you have to believe that this is your year of manifestation. All right, let me teach you something real quickly. One of the things you've got to understand, the challenges that we have most of the times is that when people start hearing about promises of God, we start looking at things that we want God to do based upon what we see other people have. And one of the things we've got to recognize is what did God have for us? See, because when you start wanting what someone else has, you then have a spirit of covetousness and jealousy. But once you know what God has for you, even if somebody has something that you don't have yet, you're not jealous of them because you know what they have is theirs and what you have is unique and it's coming to you. Well, let me say something. One of the things you got to understand about the Jewish culture is this, is that Jewish people are taught about asking different to how we ask, you know. In our culture, when we're asking for anything, we have a, a, a posture of sort of like, can I have, um, is it all right? We plead, we beg, you know, may I, okay? Jews don't think like that. Jews don't think like that. In fact, when Jews get ready to get anything, they first find out whatever they're asking for is it based upon the Abrahamic covenant? Could it be that's why most of our billionaires and rich people are Jews? Why is it? Because a child at the age of 13 has to learn their bar mitzvah. Bar means son of, mitzvah means commandments. They have to recite it and know it. A girl then has to have what they call their uh, bat mitzvah, that's daughter of the mitzvah daughter of the commandments, and they have to recite it. The book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate on it day and night, for in it you will find good success. That's what they're taught. So they ask, so whenever they ask for anything, they ask around the parameters of the covenant. They don't ask outside of their covenant. First they have to find out what is it that God promised me. And when I find out what God promised me, then I ask within the parameters of what he asked, what he promised me. And so here's how a Jew, they don't beg for anything. They're not taught about asking. They're taught about demanding. So here's what it is. They first find out, did God promise me? And if I find out that God promised me, they make a demand. Because in their minds... I'm not begging you to give me something. It's my, oh, you got it, Daryl. It's my right. It's based upon entitlement. There's about 50 people going to get it in a minute. And that's why some folks are going to be looking and wondering if it's their year, yes or no. But there's some of us in here knows what God promised us, has a prophecy over our life, and we're saying, guess what? I'm entitled to this. Do me a favor, pull your neighbor like you pull him out. See, say, neighbor, yeah. I'm entitled to this. That means every blessing that God has for me, I'm getting ready to get it. No devil in hell is going to stop me this year. I need a shout in here. Somebody shout, yeah. yeah. Woo. Everybody say entitlement. entitlement. You all don't believe me? Let me teach you. Quickly, let me tell you why it's entitlement. God said, Dr. Stone, Bishop, this is what he said, Pastor Cynthia, uh, go tell the children of Israel while they're on their way out to knock on the doors of the Egyptians. In fact, back up, back up. He was very specific. Go tell the women. Ah, uh, I love this. God is very specific. He knows. 
And I, he said, go tell the women, knock on the doors. Tell all the Egyptian, uh, every one of the gold, everything of the jewelry, I want you to give it to them and put it on the next generation. Lord Jesus, that's, another, that's, for, that's for my conference. Uh, all right. Uh, take it out. Put it on the next generation. All right. The gold, silver. Ask the women to do that. Uh, and I was wondering, God, why would you do that? He says, I wouldn't ask the man because they'd mess it up. <laughs> Can you imagine? Come on, brothers, you know how we are. Uh, he says, women are different. Women are inspirational. They move by impulse. Women don't question. Men operate on a different side of the brain. Everything has to be logic. Everything has to make sense. Can you imagine? See? When he told the women to do it, I can imagine the women go, bang, bang. Hey, lady girl. I just want you to know that all the jewelry in your house is mine. And I can imagine, I can imagine the lady saying, yeah, and, and you know that one on your neck? Please take that off too. God says it's mine. See, that's how the Jews think. It's a demand. God says it's mine. And we're going to leave it out here with all of that. Men, watch the men do it. The men will come, knock on the door, knock, back, back. Door open, uh, um, hello. Uh, I, I just, um, just want to uh, let you guys know, uh, God said that we should get all the jewelry. You know, I'm, listen, it's not me, God, God said it. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just passing on the message. Women wouldn't even bother about that. They're like, listen, girl. So I could understand why God made it that the women did it. And I was thinking about it. I was praying. I said, God, I don't understand. Why did you let the women do that? He said, I let the women do that because in the culture, the men would be working with the men outside. And it was most likely that the slaves would work inside the house. And he said to me, it's the women would know where all the jewelry was placed. The Father's House presents iGAP 2015. Come and receive power like never before. Featuring Dr. Sharon Stone from Windor, UK. Jesus did not come to give us life just to take us back to what Adam had in the garden. But he said, I have come to give you life and I've come and give you life abundantly. Bishop Francis from London. But you got to understand that this year, if there's any tragedy that's been assigned to your life, if you have the blood of Jesus over your life, this is the year you don't have to worry. Because whatever the enemy has planned, it's got to have to... Bishop Joe Iboje from Arbadeen, UK. You don't need good news to carry good news. Because you are the good news. Hello? Some of you say, okay, what good news? No. When you enter any place, there will be good news in that place. Phil Sanderson from Arbadeen, UK. Emma Stark from Glasgow, UK. Joe Ewing from Benef, UK. And Dr. Imano Ziga from the United States of America. Date, May 14th through the 17th, 2015. Come one, come all. Register now. www.fathers-house.org.uk or contact Pastor Cynthia on 01224 566 360.